Hello everyone, welcome back and thank you so much for joining me. This is going to be your November Twin Flame Soul Connection forecast, so it cannot possibly be everyone's reading. If it does resonate with you, of course, please comment below and if not, feel free to check my channel for other messages you need to hear. And remember, time, energy, and gender are fluid, so reverse roles however they apply and don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel channel and tap the notification bell so you can catch future readings. So of course, I love you guys so much. Thank you to my subscribers. You are awesome. Thanks for purchasing private readings, for subscribing to my other channels, and becoming a member of the Spicy Subscriber Society if you've already done so. If you haven't and you like the more saucy content, be sure to find the link down below where you can connect with us on a more intimate level. So for those of you who are brand new to the channel, I of course would love to have you as a subscriber. So please, when you do so, be sure to connect with me on social media as well. All of my links and everything you need to contact me is down in the description box below. So before we get started, I just wanted to say I hope you guys have had a happy Halloween slash Samhain weekend. Um, I spent it with my children, having a grand old time, collecting candy from every which way. And uh, it was really great. We had some uh, time to just kind of unwind and watch spooky movies and decorate for Halloween and um, it's just a great time of year. It's actually my absolute favorite holiday and so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you to those of you who have reached out to me who have sent me kind words and messages and gifts. I really appreciate you guys so much. And so, yeah, let's get into it. I'm excited. I love the month of November as we build up to the holiday season. And yes, if anyone was asking, I will have my Halloween decorations up until probably the week of Thanksgiving. <laughs> So judge me all you want. I don't really care. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. It's been a minute. I actually, I skipped last week um, on y'all's check-in because I was focused on Zodiac readings. So be sure to check those out if you enjoy those readings as well. Um, and there is a playlist and I will be announcing the winners of the extended bonus readings coming up this week as well. So stay tuned for that. And again, guys, I appreciate all of your likes and your views, your comments comments. Um, all of those things really help the algorithm and boost my videos so that these messages can reach other people in the YouTube universe. So let's get into it. Of course, as I always say, this journey is about you. Okay. So if you're watching this reading because you're in separation from your person and the physical, it's important to remember that separation is merely an illusion, right? It is not something that's actually a thing because you cannot be separate from that which you are and you are your twin flame so if you resonate with the twin flame journey and you're still listening to me right now um, then again take this reading as it resonates with you leave all of the rest behind obviously not every single message message that comes out is going to be for every single person so of course um, do not force the shoe to fit I will catch you on the flippity flip as I like to say so if it's not your reading, you will know. If it is your reading, you will know. I'd love to hear your comments. And uh, also remember that this is the journey of ascension. This is the journey of spiritual awakening. So as much as we love uh, Mr. Mate Suit, Divine Masculine, who roams the earth, being our perfect person and all that good stuff, uh, it's important to remember that we are whole and complete and perfect with or without anyone standing by our side. And that's one of the biggest uh, lessons to learn in the twin flame journey. It's allowing yourself to be detached from any outcome of, of romantic nature. And remember that this journey is about true unconditional love and awakening. So let's get right into it. Of course, as I always do, I would like to pull a card for the masculine and for the feminine. So if this reading resonates with you and your inner masculine or the roles are reversed, sometimes divine feminines might resonate with the masculine message. Just kind of depends on where you are in your own personal journey. So let's see what we have for the divine masculine for the month of November. Wow. So we actually have Divine Masculine, number 22. Lots of blue energy. Um, hopefully this is insinuating some sort of throat chakra awakening that will be happening for those of you who are waiting to hear from your Divine Masculine. 
So the frequency of Divine Masculine supports our strong, focused, and active side, allowing it to express itself while helping us to bring our dreams and ideas into form with kindness and wisdom. So obviously the Divine Masculine is the emperor in the tarot, the action taker, and someone who responds to their physical environment, whereas the, the feminine is the intuitive, responding from a subconscious level. So uh, as the masculine comes into their power in the season of November, it's important to remember as well that we are about to experience a new moon at the start of November. Right now, actually, we are experiencing this energy. Um, and you know, as we move through Scorpio season and prepare for Sagittarius season, I kind of feel like November is a great month for... Um, for kind of really reining in our deepest desires. And again, like the card says, putting those things forth into reality um, with all of the kindness and the wisdom that we've collected from, you know, Libra season, Scorpio season. So as the summer ended and we're ramping up through the fall and into winter, uh, there has been a little bit of a, an awakening within this throat chakra for the divine masculine, especially with all of the retrogrades. And look, as I'm saying this, my throat is starting to crack. <clears throat> especially with uh, Mercury retrograde, all the retrogrades we experienced. And Scorpio season is, is like the depths, right? The deep, dark depths of our soul that comes out for the to the surface for all to see. And so as we just experienced Halloween and this energy kind of um, carries through and dissipates, uh, we're about to embark on a new adventure, right? So Sagittarius season is uh, the truth seekers, the explorers, the shamans, and the visionaries of the of the zodiac. And you know they want their freedom. They want to be able to experience life and all of its pleasures without being restricted. So this can be ramping up within the masculine, as I do feel astrology is very much related to how we as humans, as meat suits, behave here on Earth, right? As above, so below. So as the stars align and things change above us, so too is how we uh, act and behave down here on Earth. So divine masculine coming into their power, uh, opening up that throat chakra and really allowing their dreams to come forth into their reality using everything they've learned from the feminine dare I say it so as we always say the feminine does light the way and the lessons that the masculine learns is because the feminine is showing them what is the next step right so with the feminine's energy coming through ooh, lots of green we've got this healing energy heart chakra awakening um, a little bit of solar plexus and as you can see we go further inside of this um, geometric shape here and all of the colors are present we've got purple and pink for the crown and the third eye chakra and as you know the feminine rules the upper more <clears throat> more divinely connected to source energy, I will say. So from the heart chakra up, whereas the divine masculine rules the lower chakras, the more active physically chakras. So there's a little bit of a blending energy here. As you can see, we've got the root, the red, the orange, the yellow bursting up through the heart chakra of the feminine, whereas now we've got straight up blue energy right here. So I feel almost a little bit of a role reversal because... You know, a lot of feminines have been being called to pull back their energy, as I said in the last reading, um, or just to mind their business, right? Not allow anyone to affect them, to remain unbothered, because uh, I know collectively there's been a lot of divine masculines who are afraid of of taking action on this new beginning. And so they're slinking back into old habits, okay? Um, going back to karmic partners when they know damn well it's not gonna work out. And they do so because they're afraid. They do so because they don't wanna leave their comfort zone. But the feminine is so beyond that. And you know she's forced out of her comfort zone every day. And this might be kind of a heart-wrenching time for the feminine knowing that the masculine needs to kind of go through this part of their journey um, without them. They need to awaken to these things and explore these higher chakras, okay, the feminine chakras, so that they can be more grounded in their own desires, okay? So, <clears throat> 
this healing energy, the frequency of healing supports our intrinsic ability to restore our health and wholeness by consciously using the information that comes to us through our senses and harmonizing everything accordingly. So the feminine is, again, unbothered. She is seeing these things that are happening with the masculine and she's healing from them instantly. Um, and again, healing in the now helps heal future and past timelines. So feminine, I feel like spirit's really telling you in the month of November, your job is to keep your heart chakra open, okay? Not just for your masculine, but for yourself. Allow yourself to heal at a rapid pace so that you can... Um, you can be the alchemist, okay? Like I said, moving into Sagittarius season, we're going to be asked to prepare to pull back our bows and and reach for what it is that we're shooting for. So as you really figure out what it is that you're shooting for, feminine, remember that the best way to shoot for something and to receive it is to keep your heart open, to allow yourself to feel connected on all levels, Um and again, it says here, like our ability to restore our health. So if there are any health issues that you're dealing with, I think spirit is telling you, like you have the ability to heal yourself. You have the ability to heal this connection with your masculine. You just need to have that heart chakra open. So I'm also hearing the word compassion. So feminines, you could be called to have some compassion for your masculines at this time. And having compassion doesn't necessarily mean, you know, like I said earlier, falling back into toxic patterns or allowing your masculine to think that it's okay to come to you in a distorted energy because I'm pretty sure both parties are aware at this point like that's not gonna fly okay so let's see what's on the bottom of the deck for both twins and look at that we have delight the frequency of delight supports our capacity to create and experience feelings of intense joy and happiness. The more delight we feel, the more delight we evoke in others. So I kind of feel as if spirit is also saying that it's time for both masculine and feminine to start taking part in the things that bring them joy, period, whatever that is. There's no more room to allow ourselves to dwell in this opposite energy or to be sad or depressed or thinking of the past and things that we cannot change. Now is the time to immerse ourselves in the things that bring us joy. And, you know, as I say the word joy, I'm picturing um, like snow and Christmas trees out in like a field of Christmas trees. So, you know, this could be, you know, something specific for someone out there. Um, could be saying like around Christmas time, you might be going and picking out a tree with your masculine and you might have never even thought that that would be something you would be doing. But I think spirit's reminding you that in order to immerse ourselves in joy, we have to be able to envision it and we have to be able to open our hearts to that future. Okay. And for those of you who feel like, you know, how could I possibly open my heart any more to someone who has shown me repeatedly that they will keep choosing a karmic partner over me or, or continue to perpetuate these cycles that they already have learned these lessons in it takes as long as it takes okay and it's going to take even longer if you allow what you see in the physical to deter you from what you've been trying to manifest okay so feminines keep your hearts open right now as these masculines begin cracking open their throat chakras and and opening themselves up to a new level of discovery within this connection okay so very interesting energy um, i'm going to lay this right here in between both lots of um it's like a balanced energy here with all of the colors of the chakra systems melding together. So remember, the twin flames do connect at the solar plexus chakra, which is all about who you are at your core, okay? So uh, let's get into it. I'm really excited. We're going to be using the Labyrinth Tarot for the Divine Masculine. I've been waiting a really long time for this deck, you guys, and the Labyrinth has always been one of my favorite childhood movies. I love David Bowie. And uh, for those of you who know the Labyrinth and understand the storyline, um, I do think that it's great that they put Sarah as the fool in all of the characters that they pick for this deck, which hopefully we'll get to see some good cards in this reading. But, uh, you know, we know that Sarah goes on the fool's journey. Okay, so similar to the... Similar to the twin flame journey, Sarah embarks on her own through the labyrinth. And sometimes the journey can kind of feel like that, right? Every turn, every twist, sometimes, you know, we think there's going to be an out or we're almost to our destination and then we're just hit with another wall. And, you know, regardless of, of 
those type of scenarios, whatever they specifically are for you, uh, Sarah, the fool in the deck, keeps going, right? She keeps continuing through no matter how hard it gets because she already knows the end game. She already knows what she needs to do and she's going to do everything she can to do it. As my refrigerator is... <laughs> what is my refrigerator even doing right now? Y'all, this refrigerator has a mind of its own. I'm not even going to lie. I think like a spirit lives in there or something because it is just extremely... It is extremely vocal. So, anywho, let's get into it. Like I said, we're going to find out what's going on with this Divine Masculine, and then we're going to pull cards for the Feminine. So, what do we need to know about the Fem... Or, excuse me. What do we need to know about the Masculine's conscious awareness right now regarding this journey? So, we have the Knight of Pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn energy, and the Pentacles are represented by junk in this deck. So... I really feel like this masculine is really certain in their mind of what they need to do in order to create stability for themselves. They might not have been moving along very quickly, but I feel like this masculine is taking their time. They don't want to make any mistakes. They're trying to make sure that every detail is perfect because they are dedicated into uh, creating a new life for themselves. So like I said, even if your masculine has recently fallen back in with a karmic partner um, or if they are acting differently than how you might feel in the physical versus the 5D, every step that your masculine takes is absolutely 100% necessary. You might not understand the steps that they take, but sometimes it's not for you to understand not every single crevice and corner of the journey is going to be made known to you and feminines we are intuitive and and we know things but at the same time we can't know everything okay this masculine in particular is moving very slowly very deliberately as my ice cubes crash and into the um, bucket i'm sure we're going to hear the old refill of the water pretty soon so, again, very deliberately, very steadily, very dedicated to the direction in which they're heading. And this is someone who is wanting to offer commitment. So, this could also signify, again, if you're resonating with the side of the story of your masculine maybe slipping back into those karmic cycles, this could be them taking it slow with that person because, like I said, they're trying to become stable on their own. So for some of you, not all of you, your masculine could have gotten back together with their karmic because they were not stable enough to live on their own, okay? Now... As we all know, finances can be a major thorn in the side when it comes to manifesting your connection with your twin flame. Obviously, life happens, um, things happen, family happens, and not always do we have the finances to just pick up and go do whatever our heart desires. Sometimes we have to plan, sometimes we have to really take it slow and take it day by day in order to finally get to that point where we're ready for that new beginning. So I do feel like this masculine is dedicated to taking things slowly because they want to make sure that they don't mess it up. So how are they currently feeling? Oh, just look down at the clock and it was my twin flame's birthday on the clock. <laughs> so very interesting. So let's see what they're feeling right now. We have a big chunk. I'm putting it back. This card, or excuse me, this deck is very sticky and these cards all like to clump together. So shuffle one more time and see what this divine masculine is feeling. See what they're feeling for their feminine at this time. Okay, so we have the three of wands. So three of wands is waiting for your ships to come in. This masculine has already made the decision in their heart of what they're wanting, okay? They know which direction they're wanting to go. They know what they're wanting to manifest. And again, this is talking about being patient, waiting for your ships to come in. 
this masculine has already been planning behind the scenes. They've already got like in their mind the map of what they want to happen with the feminine, but they know that it's going to be kind of a slow journey. So they're trying to be patient and I'm picturing the original tarot, which some people are annoyed with this deck because it doesn't really give a lot of images as far, there goes the water, as far as the, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I just can't. So uh, as far as the the numbered cards or the, the court cards, really, the element cards, someone called it like a pip deck, and I don't even know what that means, but I was reading the reviews. Anyways, back to the reading. So they're wanting to, they're wanting in their hearts to be patient for this new beginning because they've already been planning it behind the scenes, okay? This is also talking about manifestation and forward motion. So in their heart, I do feel like they want this to manifest with the feminine as well. So how are they viewing the feminine? So we had a chunk come out, but I'm only going to take the one that I saw because I feel like that was a very deliberate message. So they're viewing you, feminine, as the high priestess. So they already know that, that you know okay they know that you know that they know that you know that they know okay that's this energy they see you as this person who is very wise um, and filled with esoteric wisdom someone who is very to themselves keeping their secrets but doing so because they're trusting their inner wisdom they're trusting themselves they see you basically in your raw divine feminine power and they know that um that you're a very spiritual person. They know that you're an intuitive. So they see you in that energy and that's a great energy to be in. So feminine, let's talk about how they're intending to move this connection forward. How are they intending to act during the month of November? So you have the seven of wands. So your divine masculine might still be acting a little defensive towards you. Uh, they could also be getting ready to to go into battle, right? This is the warrior's pose. Seven of Wands is aggressive action towards one's goals. So if this person is kind of putting their guard up right now, it's because they're standing up for what's right. They're doing what they need to do to fight for their passion, to fight for what they're planning to do. And so I kind of feel like your person could be making a little bit of a stand in November. And I just had some deja vu saying that. So someone is going to be making a stand in November. And it's going to be, gosh, I almost knocked the camera down. <laughs> this reading is something else. This month is could be very aggressive, okay? Your masculine could be really kind of standing up, speaking their truth. Um, and finally, just doing what they know is right within their heart, within their soul. So let's talk about their true desires. What are they hoping for when it comes to the feminine? Yeah, so we have the Ten of Pentacles, the everything ship, okay? If you haven't seen you, then that phrase is from you uh, on Netflix. But this is the Ten of Junk. We've got all of the collected items here, and it just kind of screams longevity, long-term commitment, and having it all. Okay, in the physical world, they want to bring this commitment into the physical and they want to have this legacy and this ancestry with you. So everything they're working on, even if they're with the karmic right now, everything they're working on and building deep down, they know that it's going to be for this new beginning to have this everything ship with you, feminine. So let's talk about what's going on behind the scenes. What's happening for this masculine that you are not aware of at this point in time. So you have two cards stuck together. And you know what? I'm going to move these a little bit so that they're a little bit more even. As y'all know, I'm a little bit OCD with the lineup of these cards. So first we've got the Five of Wands. And this card came out in the pre-shuffle. So Five of Wands is all about... You know what? I see this like cane over here and the two X's, one on this side, one on this side. And on one side, we have the red string of fate tied around the wand. So this is that argumentative, aggressive energy that we were talking about. Your person is hoping that when they go up against whoever this is, whether this is an argument or a battle, like I said earlier, this person's like getting ready to go into battle. 
whoever they're arguing with or dealing with, there is going to be some fights, okay? They could be um, hoping that if they need to compete for your love, that they'll be the one to win your heart, feminine. So the red string of fate is only on this one stick here, which kind of reminds me too, maybe what's happening and whoever this person is fighting with could be about the subject of this soul connection, this soul tie that they're feeling. Because honestly, you can try to make something work as hard as you want, right? You can really try to force those puzzle pieces to fit. But at the end of the day, the heart wants what it wants, okay? And the soul calls for itself. It does not ever need to be validated, but it it longs to be in union. And that is what this person is fighting for right now. So as you can see, they're up against someone who does not also have that string of fate. They're not connected. This person feels disconnected from whoever this is. So this could be them arguing with a karmic partner, a family member, whoever, but it is in regards to this connection. So you know what, feminine, this could probably be why you've been called recently to detach, to um, just kind of mind your business. You know what I mean? Like just stay out of it. Don't worry about what's going on with your masculine because there are parts of the journey that they need to endure alone. Okay. And yes, you can be the light bearer and the light bringer all the live long day, but you can't what do they say? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. It's the same concept. You've got to allow your masculine to go through these things without you uh, leading the way constantly. You need to let them just go through it organically, okay? We also have another five, and it's the five of feathers, which is the five of swords. So, Again, more of this argumentative. This is petty arguments and manipulation, gaslighting. And, you know, I kind of feel like the energy that they're up against is someone who is very narcissistic, who's got that attitude like, I'm going to win, basically. I'm just here to win. Whoever this person is dealing with doesn't really care about this person, your masculine, okay? They don't care about your masculine because if they did, they wouldn't be so focused on these petty arguments and squabbles. They wouldn't be so focused on being, you know, the one who wins the argument all the time or has to one up or have the leg up on your masculine at every moment of every second of every day. I kind of feel like this person, whoever they are, they want to control your masculine and they're finally starting to stand up for themselves which is great. So like I said, with that throat chakra energy um, and these two fives here as their hopes moving forward or their desired outcome, they really want to speak their truth. And I think, like I said, they've just been kind of biding their time with this three of wands and building their stability behind the scenes. These rocks here, they remind me of the rock family, um, Sven's rock family in Frozen. I don't know why I'm thinking of that right now, but that's just what it reminds me of. So, uh, so yeah, that's what they're hoping for. And I, um, or excuse me, wait a second. What was this? So we talked about the, their thoughts, their heart space, how they're viewing you, their likely actions, what they're hoping for, uh, and what's going on behind the scenes. My bad. So what's going on behind the scenes is they're dealing with it. Okay. They're going through it. And November could be very much of a struggle for them because like I said, they're going to be feeling that tug. And the tug I'm talking about is your tug, feminine. They're going to be feeling that energy of you pulling back your bow and preparing to shoot your intentions out into the universe. And as you pull that bow back and you gather up all of your strength and your light and focus your intention on what your future wants to be, your masculine is going to feel when you let go of that bow and they're going to be encouraged and forced basically to follow that intention whether they know it consciously or not this is all a part of the journey okay so bottom of the deck for uh the masculine in the recent past we have the nine of wands which is the wounded warrior this is another card that was coming up in the pre-shuffle so <sighs> I do feel as if this masculine is fully aware of the potential that their karmic person has to 
to destroy them metaphorically, right? This person has already put your divine masculine through so much. The wounded warrior is someone who has gone through the worst of the battles, who has been treated like a dog, but keeps going. Someone who is intent on persevering, even though they know it's going to be a hard battle up ahead. The nine is signifying the almost ending of a long cycle. So your person, your masculine has really gone through it, but they're better for it. Okay. And it might be taking them a long time, but they're better for it. And they even understand this energy. Okay, so as we move through November, like I said, this is a past energy. It's like, it's like I'm hearing the Rocky theme song. They already know what they need to do. Okay, they need to fight stronger. They need to fight harder and they need to keep persevering. Otherwise, this opportunity for true everything ship with the feminine, having it all, having the life, having a family, having a legacy, none of that's going to happen. None of that's going to be possible if they do not get their act together okay so um let's go ahead and slide some of these over so that we can make sure we get all of the cards here and you guys can take a look at them while i'm talking i don't know why i said talking like that i live in the south y'all you'll have to give me a break <laughs> i'm from new york but i live in the south and it's like all i ever hear is people talking like this all the time um eventually you know it's gonna rub off on you so anyways, although I also did um, do quite a bit of theater in my high school days, so I do love doing different accents. I'm sure you've heard quite a few if you've listened to my channel. <laughs> anyways, so let's move into the feminine energy, and I'll be using the Morgan Greer Tarot, which I love. And this is the deck that I was shuffling, and I'm telling you, the Nine of Wands came out a bunch of times. So, you know, feminine, you could also be really feeling that energy, especially if, again, you're resonating with that part of the storyline where you feel like your divine masculine continues to uh, choose karmic partners. You have to remember, like... <sighs> By you acknowledging that reality or you saying to yourself, oh, my, my, my divine masculine is going to choose the karmic or, or they keep choosing the karmic. Well, they're going to keep doing that if you keep affirming that. Okay. So when you're pulling that bow back and you're looking into the future as to what you're trying to manifest, start picturing a future that doesn't have this person in it. Okay. Start picturing the future that is ideal for you and your masculine. And when you see that future in your mind, um, allow yourself to express gratitude as if it's already been achieved. Okay. So for your conscious awareness in November, we have the chariot. So lots of the, lots of the awareness of like things, it's almost like you feel this energy, like things are about to start moving very quickly, but you can't really put your finger on it. So it's like you're feeling this energy, but when you look around in your physical, you're like, uh, but where? Like, where is it? What is it? I don't see it. So this could also be spirit telling you as you are consciously aware of this energy and this kind of dissonant, not matching up in the 5D, 3D, uh, spirit could be reminding you that there are some things that you still need to work on. Okay. So again, that wounded warrior card coming up again and again in this deck for the feminine, that could be something that you need to work on is allowing yourself to keep persevering. Even when you feel completely knocked down, right? That song, I get knocked down, but I get up again. It's like that energy feminine. You've got to keep getting up again and you've got to keep persevering and being certain and clear about what you're wanting to manifest because otherwise you're going to give the universe the mixed signals, kind of like these two horses facing in opposite directions. So this is spirit calling you to be consciously aware of your thoughts and um, the light and the shadow that you allow yourself to entertain and making sure that there's an even and healthy balance of both. So I think Spirit's telling you to get control of your shadow and maybe do some shadow work during November in order to remain balanced in that energy of forward motion. So very interesting. Let's talk about your heart space during November. So you have the hanged man. Uh, hang man is spirit coming in and saying, Hey there, fella, 
madam. Uh, you've been ignoring my signs. You've been uh, kind of just like not paying attention to what I've been trying to show you here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to conveniently tie you up here to this tree uh, until you can see what I'm talking about, right? So this is the new perspective, the divine intervention to enlighten someone. So the hanged man could also be a little bit of a stuck energy, which Again, this could this could be you simply feeling stuck on this person in your heart and being very confused as to why you feel stuck and maybe spirit showing you some new things about uh, your feelings for this person. Okay, seeing things in a new light. So again, take that however it resonates for you. It's probably going to be very different for everyone. So whatever spirit is showing you at this time, it's going to be very relevant throughout the month regarding your twin flame journey. So you're viewing your person. And I love how all these cards just popped out all together. I can't even make this up y'all. So we have the nine of wands once again, and we were just talking about this. I think I called it back out of the deck. So wounded warrior, but look, he's ready to go. Okay. He's got his wand over his shoulder and it looks like he's walking pretty fast too. Cause his feathers are in the wind blowing like he's speed walking. So regardless of what you've been going through, you see your divine masculine in this energy. You're viewing him as, you know, even though whatever they're going through in the physical, on some level you see that they're persevering, okay? They're still going. And uh, that's good. I mean, I kind of feel like that's a progressive energy. So at least you're acknowledging that. And and again, that could be kind of this, the, what I was talking about earlier, being on the same page in the 5D, but things not looking the way that they should in the 3D. So the other two cards that popped up here, um, oh my goodness, for how you're viewing the masculine. So you have the three of pentacles and the uh, the nine of swords. So you literally are viewing them with their hands tied. You could also be experiencing some sort of like nightmares or like visions that are unsettling about your masculine, knowing that they've basically are tied and bound with this situation they're in. But I see this also as a card of major anxiety and fear. So if, if, if you're feeling that, if you're picking up on that energy, um, you know, rightfully so, especially if this masculine is preparing for battle, like we said earlier, if they're preparing to go up against this karmic person and their narcissistic ways. We also have the three of pentacles. So I do also think that you're viewing them as building a new foundation. Now, three of pentacles can also signify third party, but I see this more as collaborating and um, working together with a group of like-minded individuals towards a common cause. So, since we have the masculine standing here and he's by himself, and I also think it's kind of funny too how we have this sickle that he's putting up on the wall. I just noticed that for the first time ever. Um, it looks like he's about to write the number five, but it looks like a sickle and it reminds me of the Lenormand deck under the roses. So talking about cutting off something in order to build something new, I think you're kind of seeing your masculine in that energy but um, like I said, it's it's conflicting, right? You feel all this fear, you feel all this anxiety, and you're watching your masculine um, with his hands tied and bound and wondering, you know, when when is this cycle going to be over, right? When are we going to go from the 9 to the 10 and finally put these burdens of karmic cycles to the, to the past, right? To the end. So what is your likely action moving forward, feminine? Ah, the Queen of Cups. So Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, you are just going to continue to keep your own cup filled. You're going to continue to sit there calmly and be the empath and healer and um, very smart, intuitive person that you are. And you're going to just be patient, okay? Because the Queen of Cups does not have to chase love around in these streets. The Queen of Cups is love and it's unconditional. So Keep your cup filled, feminine. Um, continue to be open. And we talk about this energy of healing and compassion. Keep your heart open, feminine. Okay? Being authentic in your feelings, regardless of what's going on in the 3D. That could end up being a challenge for some of you. And that could be why Spirit is telling you it's time to do some shadow work. Okay? So what are your hopes for the future? 
wow, we got a lot coming out here. So we've got the four and five of pentacles and the sun. So ultimately, I feel feminine is that you're hoping that your masculine is able to uh, to save up um, and get to the level they need to be financially so that they can come out of any sort of struggle. So again, this this could have to do specifically with finances for some of you. Your masculine could have been struggling financially, which is why they needed to kind of lean back on the karmic, uh, or go back to a situation where they knew they were going to be ending, having up being codependent on somebody. Um, can't even talk, y'all. I need some water. So I think you're hoping that your masculine can come out of this sort of uh, struggle, this this lack mentality or feeling left out in the cold. You could also be hoping for that energy because, you know, feminines, I know a lot of you have felt left out in the cold by your masculines and it's been really tough, right? So hoping for yourself to continue to build on your own financial stability. This could also be simply saying that you're hoping that your masculine won't hold back their feelings any longer. Um, or again, if you're financially struggling, this could be you hoping to come out of that energy for yourself. And with the sun coming out after that, again, this is that new beginning, that bright, new, prosperous, positive, yes. And we have these two looking at one another. And typically the sun doesn't show a masculine and a feminine. And so I love that this card is coming out because that's exactly what we're talking about here, this masculine energy. I think you're really just hoping that your divine masculine will rise up so that you can have have this yes this new beginning okay looking in each other's eyes finally and and being able to start and embark on a new path together okay that's promising that's happy exciting so what's on the bottom of the deck for you feminine so in the recent past we have the page of swords so you know keeping an eye on your masculine trying to study them, um, hoping maybe they would communicate. This could also be you wanting to send a message to your divine masculine, but holding that message back. Uh, just like I said, keeping to yourself, holding your comments, uh, just kind of waiting and observing your masculine. You could also be looking at them on social media, um, you know, reflecting on times that you've had with one another. But I see this as a card of learning and, and, feminine, if you're trying to learn more about what's going on behind the scenes with your masculine, I think that this energy is something of the past at this point. I think a lot of you are, again, starting to detach and become more into yourselves and your own spiritual journey, which is the whole point. It's the whole point of the twin flame journey. So I think feminine seems like you guys are all on the right track, the right path, and just continue to acknowledge those shadows don't stuff them into the closet um, the point of the shadows being acknowledged is so that you can heal them and as that card reminded you earlier is you are capable of healing yourself so if you feel like there's something within you that needs to be healed that's probably the reason why your divine masculine is cycling back into the past karmic cycles because there's still something within you that needs to be addressed, that needs to be balanced. So interesting. Let's talk the um, Osho Zen and we're going to use that as a kind of a clarifier for the masculine and the feminine and we'll be looking at what is going on uh, behind the scenes a little bit more and what's challenging the masculine at this time yeah so with the courage card in the reverse as you can see we've got this little flower here blooming from stone which obviously flowers don't usually grow through stone unless they're pesky weeds but with a courage card in the reverse I think that could just be a struggle for the masculine right now really mustering up the courage to to do what they need to do to follow their passion and you know they, they want this to grow they want to leave their heart open to the feminine but unfortunately sometimes when you're stuck in these karmic situations it can be hard to see that that courage is within us all along right having the will what do they say when there's a will there's a way and I think the masculine does have the will they're just trying to find the way right now so what else do we have for the masculine moment to moment so again we said this earlier they're taking it day by day they're trying really hard to find joy in little moments 
books, trying to be happy, um, trying to envision what they want in their future and what's going to make them happy. But some of them might be, uh, like I said, trying to, to gain financial stability or independence and they might have no choice but to move day to day. Uh, some of them could be living paycheck to paycheck. So let's see what else we've got for the masculine. Let's get a couple more. So we also have completion. Uh, and as I said earlier, the puzzle pieces, you can try as hard as you want to force those puzzle pieces to fit. But if they're not the right piece, then it's not the right piece. And I see completion also as the world energy. So this masculine could be struggling to finally complete this cycle and learn these lessons once and for all. So I see the world as a successful completion of a journey, not just like ending something, but this masculine doesn't want to leave things on a bad note. They don't want to hurt anyone. They don't just want to like dip set and get the hell out of there. They want things to end on copacetic terms. They want things to be peaceful and they want to get through this and complete everything uh, to a point of where they feel like they've accomplished something, not where they feel like there are loose ends and they're still stuck in a distorted energy. So they could also be moving this day-to-day -day energy or moment-to-moment -moment energy because they know eventually they're going to finally find the feminine. They're going to finally find that last missing puzzle piece they've been struggling to, to put together this whole time. And then also we've got exhaustion, <laughs> nine of wands again. Oh my goodness. So they are exhausted. They're tired. Uh, they could just be going through all the BS with their karmic, dealing with all of their crap. And um, once again, almost knocking the camera all the way over. So wounded warrior through and through, this is your divine masculine's challenge. It's coming out and blooming through these rocks that they're buried under. Okay. A lot of metaphors in this reading and uh, to finally complete this this karmic cycle and end it once and for all, right? So let's talk about the feminine's challenges throughout the month of November. Abundance. So I do see this as the feminine really being challenged to stay in that open energy. This is the king of pentacles, I believe, in this deck, but I think that the feminine just needs to focus on herself, getting that balance within, trusting that she is abundant and knowing that everything that is meant for her is going to flow right to her. This could be a challenge for the feminine, especially like I said, if things aren't lining up in the 5D and the 3D, it could be very easy also for the feminine to slip back into that lack mentality. And that's exactly what you're hoping to be rid of. So we also have adventure and this is the uh, page of wands. So I love this card because this child energy here is staring over this cliff and it's all rainbows and all lights and everything looks festive, but they're alone and behind them is this darkness. So feminine, I think that your challenge is to continue to to be inspired, continue to be the inspiration and to be the light because regardless of what's happened in the past, that doesn't mean that your, that your flame is out. It doesn't mean that your creative potential is gone. Spirit's reminding you that even though it might be a challenge to remember that you yourself are the light in the darkness, um, there's always going to be another page. There's always going to be another day. There's always going to be another beginning. So stay inspired and stay creative feminine because that is what you're being called to do. So let's get one more for the feminine for the month of November. And we also have control, which is the, who is this? I believe this is the king of swords. So Libra, Gemini, Aquarius energy. This could also be spirit telling you that you might have a little bit of difficulty controlling your words, controlling your thoughts. So just be very mindful about what you say and what you think because your words and your thoughts materialize and manifest 
Your words are spells. So no negative self-talk on yourself this month, feminine, or ever. No uh, thinking about the past and, and voicing your opinions on how you were treated before. Focus on what's to come. And I think Spirit's telling you to get control over your mind, control over your thoughts, so that you are consciously manifesting your future from a positive standpoint, okay? Not bringing up any of the, the misinformation or miscommunication that you dealt with in the past into your future, all right? And so for the mutual energy here, we have the nine of cups. So the word here is laziness, but I see this as wish fulfillment and uh, being happy and satisfied with oneself. So remember, that's a big part of the journey, being happy and satisfied with yourself as you are, trusting and believing that you are all that you will ever need in this world. And yes, although it would be amazing to unite with your twin flame in the physical and have a romantic scenario play out, I think Spirit's telling you with this delight card here and the Nine of Cups that what you both need to be focusing on right now is what brings you that ultimate happiness that you are craving, that you deserve. If you're focused on that and that alone, then how could you possibly manifest anything bad into your life? With your heart open and your focus strictly on what you're wanting to manifest, you're going to be rewarded and all of the things that are meant for you are going to materialize, okay? So, and look at that too. Bottom of the deck, we have consciousness. So like I said earlier, be very aware of the thoughts that you allow to live in your head because some of them are there to distract you uh, or to make you get back into that conflicting energy like we talked about. Remember that you are always consciously manifesting. So let's get an advice card from Spirit and see what they would like you to know moving forward, Feminine. This could also be like an outcome card, but again, take what resonates with you. Oh my goodness. Well, that was aggressive. So first of all, all y'all's cards just rolled out of here and messed up my whole my whole lineup, which makes me kind of sad. So let's talk about what's face up first. We have good luck over here. So we've got this cat here. I always think black cats are good luck. So Spirit's telling you that luck is on your side, and I love how the cat is wearing a crown. So no matter what is thrown your way, Feminine, Spirit's telling you, you are lucky, you are the light. So just trust the universe and, and know that at some point, at some point, your luck is going to be very clear and in your face, okay? That's what I just heard. We also have protection, so it is definitely time to protect your energy, protect your manifestations. As you can see, she's holding the earth like she's got a pregnant belly. So this could also be spirit reminding you, like anything you're trying to manifest when you're pulling back that bow and envisioning your future, don't share it with just anybody, okay? Protect your investments, protect your energy, protect your future manifestations because you never know who's trying to throw you the evil eye, especially in these twin flame connections. Because, you know, people who haven't met their twin flame or karmic partners out there, they love to eat this up and, and throw in our faces that, you know, this isn't real, that doesn't make any sense, and you're crazy, and whatever else the haters want to say. But those people are sent to us also for a reason, to help us to trust our own discernment and to remember who we are. Because you know what? If we can just simply be swayed by someone telling us, oh, you're crazy, well, then guess what? We got a lot more work to do, right? So use your discernment feminine, protect your energy, protect your future manifestations. We also have well-being. So focusing on self-love, doing everything that you could possibly do that is good for you, for your family, Manifestation, yeah. So Spirit's also telling you this is going to be a great time for you to manifest. And this is because November is a great time for wishes and, and portals. And we just went through the 111 portal. And there are 11 days leading up to this 1111 portal. So you guys really focus on what you want to manifest because now is the time. I also have happiness once again, talking about that delight, that joy, experiencing all of the things that make you truly happy, all of the things that make you smile, that make you feel free. 
and love. So again, driving that point home, love yourself, heal yourself, keep that heart chakra open feminine, and just allow things to flow freely. Luck is on your side. You're being divinely protected, and these connections are divinely protected and guided. So it's important to remember that. Okay, so very interesting. Let's move into messages from the divine feminine. This could be a messages from your higher self to you. Uh, this could also be things that you would like to say to your masculine. Just depends on the connotation. So let's see what we've got from the feminine oracle. And also, you guys, this is my deck that I created, my original artwork and messages. So feel free to check my shop down below if you'd like to order your own copy if you're a deck collector. And I actually think I'm going to run a sale in my shop for the month of November as well. So stay tuned for that. And again, my link is down there so you can always check out my shop whenever you'd like. So let's see, anything else from the feminine deck? We got quite a few. So first thing I see is self-love is the best love. And we're just talking about loving yourself, protecting yourself, trusting in the universe. I'm manifesting this connection through writing and other creative outlets. So part of that creative energy of the Page of Wands, like I said, stay inspired and you know, be your own inspiration. Use this time of separation to get your your ideas out there to allow yourself to birth new ideas and and just be the best you can be right manifest the connection by being true to yourself I am not my body I am not my mind I am my soul so trusting and believing that the thoughts in your mind and the feelings that you're having and and all of the physical things you go through that's not actually who you are okay you are your soul Synchronicity is all around me, pointing me in your direction like a compass. So you definitely also be feeling all of the signs, all of the sinks, feeling like, wow, um, can't even believe that I'm still being pointed in this person's direction. Some of you could even be shocked. I have faith that we will get it right in this life. So your higher self is telling you to keep the faith that twin flame union is destined and promised in this lifetime. So we also have, the only thing I'm chasing is my dream. Yeah, that is the only thing you should chase, feminine. And then lastly, I want to wake up next to you every day. So really longing for your masculine at this time and the physical, um, hoping to manifest that future. So if this is something you're wanting, uh, that's what you need to envision. Okay, start by doing this small exercise. If you want to wake up next to your divine masculine every day, then every day when you wake up, you need to envision that your divine masculine is there with you and you need to smile and embrace that moment and, and accept that it is true. Okay, and um, let's talk about what the Divine Masculine would like to say to the Feminine. Let's see what else. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that is quite enough since we had a bunch of cards fall out. So first off, I didn't know what you meant to me until you were gone. So... Part of the journey, too, is to go through separation because things mean a lot more and things hold a different value once that happens. It allows you to learn the lessons with or without the person. That way you can truly discover what love is. That way you can truly discover what your twin flame does mean to you. I have the power to create my own reality. Yeah, absolutely. The masculine is rising up in that power. I understand how important this connection is. So having an awakening of, of what they're working towards, like I said earlier with that Knight of Pentacles. Manifestation via masturbation. So your person's definitely touching themselves, thinking about you. So like I said, that small exercise that we talked about, picturing your divine masculine with you in the mornings, if that's what you want to do, if that's the life you want to live, this masculine could be envisioning being with you physically and uh, manifesting through 
the physical, like I said. So I'm currently away, or excuse me, I'm cutting away. Lord of mercy, I can't even read. I can't talk, can't read. Are you sure it ain't another Mercury retrograde? Somebody tell me. We're, we're still in the shadow, aren't we? And that's why I sound like this. It's because I'm like literally glitching as a person. <laughs> <laughs> I am cutting away the things that no longer serve my highest good. Yes, that is exactly what we've been waiting for you to do, masculine. I'm working and on balancing my shadow side. Yes, so this shadow work we were talking about earlier, you could be called to do that because that's what your masculine is still doing. 555, I'm making major changes to be with you. And 888, abundance is mine and my karma is repaid in kind. So a lot of this Knight of Pentacles energy is coming up because they are needing to pay off their karmic debt, if you resonate with that. Part of them doing so is to be slow and steady this time versus maybe the past where they've just acted or been impulsive as the divine masculine tends to do in their distorted energy. So I feel like there's been um, a lot of transformation over the last couple of months with the masculine collective, but overall in November, I do feel as if this is gonna be a major throat chakra awakening for them and the need to stand up for themselves and do what's right. So, Hopefully this reading resonated with someone. Sorry, I could barely talk halfway through it. But uh, if it did resonate, I'd love for you to comment below and share. Definitely hit the like button. And of course, like I said, there will be other readings and content coming out very soon. And look forward to your new moon reading in the next couple days, which as a matter of fact, today is already the second. So Hopefully I'll be out with that video by tomorrow. And yeah, I love you guys. I hope you're staying safe out there and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.